What's up everybody? This is Steve Stralacci and today we are looking at the best looking and cheapest Telecaster style guitar that I've ever come across. This is the Glary GTL Semi Hollow guitar. And this goes for a whopping 120 bucks on Glary's website. Um, they sent this out to me to do a review of, so I wanted to give some honest opinions, um, some good, some bad, some really bad. But overall, I think as a beginner, I feel like the most important thing is that you're inspired to play and that you're picking something up that you like to look at. So I think aesthetics are really important when it comes to a beginner guitar. And obviously this thing is beautiful. I think this is one of the, like, the nicest looking cheap guitars that I've ever seen. Like, look at that, look at this finish. Like, that's awesome. And it's a real, you know, real semi-hollow, so. Really hollows out. Um, where the F hole, or as I call it, a seahorse hole. What do you think of that? Look at that hole. Is that F hole or is that a seahorse hole? You tell me. So, basic things about the guitar. This is almost like a maple cap neck, um, similar to what I have in my 68 Tele, but um, it's no skunk stripe, so it's truss rod adjustable from the uh, top of the headstock, and it's actually a maple cap neck, so there's a maple on maple, maple fretboard on top of a maple neck. Um, the profile is pretty fat. It is a pretty decent sized, I'm not gonna say baseball bat, but um, pretty thick neck, uh, especially for a beginner guitar. But I personally prefer that because I've got uh, pretty wide hands. So the tuners on this are unbranded. So some more positives of the guitar. Um, it's got a nice bridge here, nice three barrel Tele style bridge that, um, oh, look at that. Oh, that's a nice shot of that. That looks nice. Basic tele construction and um, wiring, three-way switch. Gets you your uh, pickup selector, tone knob, and a volume knob. They actually feel really nice. The uh, There's a nice roll to them, so I actually quite enjoy that. The nut is plastic. The barrels are steel, which is what you'd find on you know some vintage tellies, which is pretty decent, a nice touch. And uh, the back is a nice flat black paint. So in the case, you get your kind of uh, standard cheap stuff where it comes with like the nylon gig bag, which is nice. It's a nice addition. They did not have to include that. Um, truss rod wrench. It comes with the Allen wrench to adjust the saddles. And it comes with a cable, like the standard cable that comes in most import guitars. Gets the job done. No problem. And there's a pick and a strap in the bag. And it comes in this really nice uh, heavy duty, thin cardboard and small amount of foam carry case that it was shipped in. I would not recommend carrying the guitar around in this. So the maple on maple neck has a 12 inch radius, which is very similar to, you know, Gibson feeling necks, but obviously a different scale length. It's a 25 and a half inch scale length for those that are keeping score of that. The body is basswood and it's, it looks, it's actually matched really well. It's a three piece body, but the, uh, the seam is hard to find from the bottom to the middle, but obviously this top with the F hole is its own piece. So a really nice basswood, basswood. The pick guard is a white pearl. If you could see it in the light, if it's catching the light shimmering, it's got that nice uh, reflector to it. Not bad. So the frets on here are actually, I think one of the uh, the best parts of this. On Normally on guitars in this price range, you're gonna have really sharp fret ends and you're gonna be um, fighting the guitar a lot because you're gonna be riding your hand underneath and these frets, the fret ends are gonna be stabbing you. This actually doesn't even need to be uh, shaved down at all. Usually an import guitar like this, you'd have to shave down and file the uh, fret ends so they're not cutting up your hands. This one does not have that issue, which is really nice for the price point. And now onto um, some negatives with a guitar in this price range. I wouldn't classify these as knocks on the guitar because for 120 bucks, you get what you pay for. So I won't call these total flaws because it's a $120 guitar. So you do get what you pay for. It's not like you're you know, buying a Sir or something custom shop. For 120 bucks, you get a great looking guitar and uh, something that's at least playable for a beginner. But there are flaws. And uh, let's highlight a couple of those right here. The F holes are not painted. So the inside, the paint job is a little bit jacked up. And on the inside of the F holes is some blue paint that looks like it got sprayed in there 
when they were doing the, uh, the top coat. The painting is, you know, it is what it is. I actually really like this flaw here in the body. It looks like the, uh, the fade is a little bit off, but I actually kind of like the way that looks. What do you guys think in the comments? I think that's a really cool part of it. You know, it's not a consistent traditional burst or a fade to black. I actually like the way that looks. Also, there's a bunch of spots on here where you could see the paint wasn't totally caked on there. And um, you could see some hazing in the paint. And on the back, it looks like some of this could almost just chip right off really easily. But again, for 120 bucks, very minimal complaint. It'll actually relic really cool and eventually look really cool the more you beat on it. The saddles are not intonated at all. So from Glary, this is not very well set up. I have it still as it came with the original strings and I'm gonna play through it and show you what I mean in a second but the saddles definitely need to be set up and intonated. If you guys want a video on how to make this guitar sound and play like a professional guitar, let me know in the comments and I'll put together a part two on this Glary guitar, making it into a beast of a player. It's got a lot of potential for upgrades. Really great bass canvas, but definitely needs some love. And the biggest offender, the worst part of the guitar is from the headstock up between the tuners and the nut. This is sometimes unplayable. It's very frustrating to play this guitar because there are very big issues with the nut. So the nut's actually away from the fretboard and there's actually a gap in there that it looks like there was supposed to be a zero fret or something. And there's actually a gap between the nut and the fretboard, which is causing a ton of tuning issues. And the nut's also really high. To fix this, you can just you know knock the nut out when you have no strings on, take some sandpaper to it, file it down a little bit, glue it back in and you can be right in business. I will include that in the part two video if you guys want that, request it in the comments below. And the tuners are jacked. Um, they feel okay to turn and stuff, but like the G string was super, super tight. <laughs> you giggled. And then um, the rest of them don't hold tune exactly great, but I'm a little bit curious if that's because of the nut or if it's because of the tuners. The first thing I would do is throw a graph tech nut in here if I were to actually try to make something out of this guitar, definitely want to throw a graph tech nut there. Drop in place. You just got to do some sanding and it'll fit right in place. And uh, you'll have a great playing and sounding guitar. It's hard to keep this in tune because the nut being so high, you have to push so much harder on the strings in the open position and that affects the tuning. I'm sure you'll hear that when I do the playing example. Also the neck pocket in here is really nice and well fit. It's flush. It sits in there nicely. There's no crackling or any, uh, there's no movement, it's in there really nicely. So overall really well constructed as far as the wood to wood is going. So another positive on the setup, at least the nut and the string spacing are all appropriate. I've played plenty of guitars that are, you know, almost five times more expensive than this guitar. Some that come from Mexico from a quite big brand name and have been really disappointed with, you know, the nuts not being cut properly as far as string spacing goes. At least with this, you could file it down to your appropriate height and still play it. Some of the uh, Made in Mexico guitars that I've played will have the string spacing be totally off and just play totally weird because the string spacing isn't the same. I've also seen plenty of issues in the bridge area where the strings aren't sitting in the right place and you get strings falling off the fretboard and stuff. And that stuff, that for me is always a no-no and that's the sign of immediate, the guitar's trash but this actually has really appropriate string spacing. The nut is cut somewhat properly there as far as string spacing goes and the saddles are set properly to where I'm not falling off the fretboard while I'm playing. All right, so let's get to plugging this in. I'm gonna plug this into my Line 6 Pod Go, which is a great beginner to intermediate level that can be used all the way up to the professional level of um, multi-effects unit. So I'm gonna go direct in. You're gonna hear the pickups. I'm gonna to try to keep this guitar in tune as best as I can. You'll hear the lower that I play, the harder it is to keep it in tune. It's just the nature of the instrument until I fix it up. Here is a uh, clean sound using the Pod Go. I'm in the middle position. Actually, no, let's, let's start at the neck. I'll be on the neck pickup of the guitar.
go to the middle position. This is the two pickups together. So the bridge and the middle combined. Pretty good taper on the volume pot as well. Let's go to the bridge pickup. And the tone down a little bit because that's definitely a little bit more trebly and thin. definitely hear a little bit of harsh ice pickiness going on with that bridge pickup, but the neck pickup is actually really nice. Um, let's do some cleaner leads with it. I'm going to go volume up, tone all the way up. Let's go to the middle position, bridge and neck pickup. Bridge pickup. All right, let's see how this handles some dirt. We're gonna do a couple of rhythm chords and then um, some lead stuff. Here it is on the neck pickup. Let's hear open chords now. You can maybe hear what I'm talking about tuning. Let's go to the middle position. Now let's go to some bridge pickup. So you can hear now with a little bit of gain, you hear the pickups a little bit microphonic. But again, for the price range, that's not to be unexpected. But um, yeah, so that's the basics of the Glary. This is how it comes right from Glary. Again, if you guys want me to do a video on how to set this up properly, how to get it playing like a million dollar guitar, 
maybe not a million, but playing like a professional style or professional level guitar. It is possible, it just needs a little bit of love. Again, it's a great canvas for upgrading and modifying. If you're looking for a guitar to get your feet wet and making modifications, changing pickups and you know learning how to do different things to a guitar, like set it up and you know shave a neck down or do some modifications, this is a great one to go with. And if you're a beginner, it's definitely a not bad guitar once you can fix a couple of the issues. So this is the Glary GTL. Thin line tele body, hundred twenty dollar guitar, amazing aesthetic, great looking guitar. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. See you in the next video.